triumph is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, has redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, not as orphans are we left in sorrow now. Alleluia, he is near us, faith believe nor questions how. Though the cloud from sight receive I like the combo here. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told him, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial claws there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial claws there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial claws, that rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, 
the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning, everybody. So I say he is risen, and then you say he is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Amen. Hallelujah. I love it. We have a beautiful celebration today because we are celebrating not simply an event but we are celebrating the nature of God, not just an event that God did. The resurrection was not a one-time thing 2,000 years ago. The resurrection is Jesus. He says, I am the resurrection, I am the life. And today we celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection, who is the life. We just said he is risen, he is risen indeed. We didn't say he rose a while ago or he was risen, he is risen. And like. It's a total game changer when we realize that what God calls us to in his love is to be a member of the resurrection. That God who is always rising up is catching us, wants to catch us and bring us up. Rise up, he says. Look to what's above. We heard that in our second reading. Rise up. And the Lord, it's impossible for us to do that on our own. When we got darkness, when we got problems, when we got issues and things, it's impossible for us to rise above those things on our own. We need the power of Jesus. And we can only have the power of Jesus if we are living in Christ, in Jesus, who is the resurrection and who is the life. Salvation comes from one place, and that is Jesus Christ. There is nothing else. And we have salvation, the opportunity for it, because we are baptized in Christ and alive in Christ. And like yesterday, we had 17 baptisms. Isn't that wonderful? The church was packed and we had all these new people at the Easter Vigil. It was like we got out of here at midnight. It was so heavenly. It was like, but God like pumping this new life. And in baptism, we enter into the living, breathing, resurrected Christ. We enter into the resurrection. Outside of that, there's no salvation here or hereafter. But life in Christ is what it's all about. And man, like, how, it's, not a, it's not like we, we look to the resurrection from a distance, like a, from a historical perspective. Like that's something back then, so far removed from me. The resurrection is now. Jesus is now. Jesus is eternal. And God, the risen Christ, wants a personal relationship with every single soul in this church. Every single soul in this whole bloody world, Jesus, the resurrection, wants a relationship with you. And that's a, when we truly enter into that. And get this, it's, it's so different from what most people think. Oh, I want to follow Jesus. Well, good for you, but best, better yet, live in him. That's the, he says, I want you to remain in me and me and you. Like, I want this. Not here's me and then here's you following, you know, behind. Like, no, Jesus, that's not good enough for him. Jesus wants us not to be simple servants, simple followers. He wants us as members of his body, the living, breathing, resurrected Christ. And man, that's what we're invited into. It's, it's, it's such a game changer. Our first reading today, listen to this. This was awesome. Did you catch it in these like three or four sentences? We heard almost every single sacrament. And folks, that's how these, that's how we are, we are invited to have this relationship with the living Christ, the resurrected Christ, is in a special way through the sacraments. Listen to this. 
This is in the Acts of the Apostles, which of course we all know was written by St. Luke, who was a physician. He says, he talks about the baptism that John preached. He talks about, in other words, the beginning of everything. When we enter into Christ, enter into the life, to the resurrection, that's what he talks about. Then he talks about the anointing with the Holy Spirit and power. That's confirmation that we receive the plentiful abundance of holy confirmation. All of this, the power, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Then he talks about the healing of all those oppressed by the devil. That's the anointing of the sick that we get. Uh, he talks about uh, God who invites us to eat and drink with him. Eucharist! Like, you all realize the Eucharist is not a symbol. The Eucharist is Jesus. Jesus at the Last Supper, he said, take this bread, take this wine, it is my body, it is my blood, it is me. The Eucharist at this Mass, at every Mass around the world is Christ. It's alive, it's not an it, it's a Him. The Eucharist is the resurrection. The Eucharist is the life. Like, yeah, doesn't that blow your minds? Like, we actually get to receive the resurrection into our own bodies and our own souls. Holy smokes! We receive life. And you remember John chapter 6, the one who does not eat my flesh and drink my blood has no life. But Jesus is the life. And when we receive Jesus at the Holy Mass, at the Eucharist, we receive life. The Eucharist is alive. The Eucharist is alive. And that changes us and it makes us alive. Do you know how many people walk around like they're sleepwalking? It's me sometimes. It's you sometimes. That a lot of people walk around like zombies. That's not the resurrection. St. Teresa of Avila said, Lord, save me from another downcast saint, because there ain't such a thing. You know, to be alive in Christ, to receive the life, and when we realize that the Eucharist is Jesus, the Eucharist is the life, is the resurrection, we never, ever, 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 ever would miss a Sunday Mass. Listen to this, folks. This was in yesterday's prayers. Where did they go? I order you, O sleeper, to rise up and awake. I did not create you to be held a prisoner of hell. And folks, when we receive Christ, the living Eucharist, the living body and blood of Christ, not a symbol, not a wafer, not a thing from 2000, the living, breathing Christ who is alive, like we hear in our first reading, it's a game changer. And guess what? It changes us. Transformed people transform people. When we're transformed by the living Christ, the resurrected Christ, we will change this world and we will save it one soul at a time. And then it will be a little less broken and a little less dark. And folks, that's what we're invited into. And it starts, Mother Teresa, they asked her, how do you do all that you do? And she says, I don't do anything. I received Christ and he does everything through me, through my hands, my heart, my feet. Man, that's everything. And we also, he keeps going. He talks about the forgiveness of sins. That's confession. He talks about the commissioning of the apostles to preach. That's holy orders. Like, when we think about how we are invited into a personal relationship with life himself, with the resurrection, with the living, breathing Christ, the resurrected, the eternal Christ, these seven sacraments are the big way. They're the big way. And man, nothing else is like that. Nothing else even, it, it, it's, life without Jesus is drudgery. And it's nothing, there's no meaning to it. But life with Jesus, who will pump meaning and love and faith into our routines, into our daily life, and it's, it's, he's everything. I know that my Redeemer liveth, said Job in the Old Testament, because he had a relationship with the living God. And folks, one time I was talking to an atheist. He says, I don't believe there's a God in here. I said, let me tell you one thing. I'll stop you right there. There is a God. I talked to him this morning. You know? And folks, that's our God. 
and he wants that relationship with you so much. Please, let's all turn wholeheartedly to Jesus and live in him, in the resurrection, in the life, in a more heartfelt way this year. Between now and next Easter, let's change. Let's be transformed by him who is the resurrection in his life. Transformed people transform people. And that's what we do, folks. Jesus is the life. He is the resurrection. He is everything. Pray God. We will not walk, be sleepwalkers through life, not be a bunch of zombies, but be truly alive in him who is life. And not just life here, life hereafter. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.